in talking about, you know, Back to the Future and, you know, working on the Jordan line through those iconic years and things like that, um, I mean, do you ever think and kind of look back and reflect how how so many things came together? I mean, even, you know, the work on the cross trainers and the Air Max Ones and things like that, it's like there were so many times where you seem to be in the perfect place at the perfect time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, and I mean, obviously a lot of that is hard work and a lot of that is talent. Do you, how much do you kind of think about that and reconcile that? And how much do you, I mean, you just, maybe you, maybe you don't look back and, and think about it that way because you're always focused on the next thing. I think you're touching on something that's very real. Um, you know, uh, timing is, is everything. And, uh, you know, had I not been uh, paired up with Michael Jordan, uh, things might have been different. Um, or maybe I would have ended up being paired with someone else. That, so, but but the reality is, you know, timing is is, uh, and and circumstances um, are uh, always, you know, important parts of uh, the success profile for almost anyone. Uh, I have to, I do though uh, sometimes uh, hear why well, you're so lucky that you got to do Air Jordans. Um, and um, I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's really fortunate that I got that got to you know work with him but uh, but I also remember um, taking full advantage and being very aggressive about what uh, how how to leverage such a special person into really nice design work that other people would really you know kind of dig so uh, so I guess there's there's this always this uh, kind of uh, combo of things that has to sort of were a kind of line up yeah and maximizing the opportunity yeah. i think that's that's where some people like uh that um like oh he's that person is so lucky they got to do that or um, i think they sort of uh naturally overlook the fact that uh, even if your timing is right you still might screw up it still might not things still might not be you know what the way it, you know, turn out the way you want it so you have to work super hard and you have to again maximize um, everything around you. That's, I think that's kind of what I think what all um, people, uh, you know, successful people do is they, they leverage and maximize their opportunities. Um, and, uh, and sometimes special things happen. Nice. I like that. Get this straight. Gabe. Gabe. Who's Matt? That's Matt. There's Matt. Robert. And Robert. Okay, got it. Gabe, as long as we, yeah. We told Kendall if she, little... if she remembers any of the names, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been riding motorcycles? That's a good. That's a good question. I'm going to say I probably probably have been riding full size motorcycles for about 17 years. You know, but before that, it was just scooters. Yeah. And I have a funny story about it because Michael Jordan, um, after he retired, he started. He was riding motorcycles a lot, and and I, he, he, I'd always come in the room, and he's like, "So how's your little, how's your little motor scooter? How, how you doing on your little scooter? You, you not a big, not a big. Where, where's your big boy pants? You just need to ride real motorcycles." And and, I, and my wife is, does not like motorcycles, but um, but I, I kind of, I, in a way, was sort of shamed into uh, stepping up and starting to ride, which I really have, have really enjoyed. But, uh, but, it was it was kind of like uh, 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 I knew I was going to get get the, get razzed by MJ every time. <laughs> nice. What are some of the similarities you see when you look at you know kind of transportation design, motorcycle design, car design, and then sneaker design? Oh yeah, well, it's a great question to talk about. You know, design influence from one you know industry or one product type to another, and it's a it's quite common for. Uh, to, for uh, a designer like myself to, to be inspired by a car or a motorcycle and I look at those magazines a lot and uh, you know try and pay attention to the latest stuff and then of course there's a huge custom scene here in Portland um, everybody I mean if you're really actually cool you have uh, you, you take a Honda CB and you customize it or uh, whatever but um, so I, I'm trying to pay attention to all of that, and and uh, if you sort of add that back into you know cool cars, and in, uh, you, know, you can be inspired by the lines, by the by even the composition, and uh, 
I, I think about more than once uh, I've referenced, um, you know, motorcycles and or cars uh, in the design of my shoes. Right. Sure. When you're kind of out and about traveling, uh, do you find yourself, are you very focused on people's feet and their shoes and their footwear and things like that? It's a disease. I, I, I swear I, I miss half of the scenery because I'm always looking at people's feet, you know, and I just, it's a natural kind of reaction to being in the business, you know, sort of uh, not just looking at like new designs, but just uh, kind of taking inventory on, you know, what's going on, you know, what people are wearing. So yeah, I watch, I, I look at, uh, I, I look down a lot. Is that how it is when you watch sports as well? Are you very fixated? Like, does it kind of distract from, from the action? I think uh, in, in basketball in particular, you know, you're, it's always uh, kind of a big deal as to, you know, as uh, uh, to, it's, it's kind of, I think it's part of the culture of basketball to sort of notice what shoe a person is wearing, you know, and uh, whether or not they're, uh, of course, playing well is another one. But, uh, but uh, you know, the cool shoe along with playing well is like the, that's the home run. Yeah, yeah, for sure. When you're out riding motorcycles now, is it very therapeutic? Is it like a time where you can kind of turn off the work and, and all of those things? And is it kind of like a, a zen type of thing? Or how do you, how, do you, how would you describe when you're out riding motorcycles? It is a way to block out work and you know other issues that might uh, kind of be present uh, or omnipresent in your mind um, because really uh, getting on a motorcycle is um, it requires a lot of attention you know and some skill and and uh, so for me I get on and I try to just wipe everything clean and uh, and concentrate on being a, a good rider a safe rider uh, and um, and also and try try to always think about improving my skills every time, every time I go out. And so, and, and I think that's good because you definitely have to just like leave everything else alone in your head, focus. Nice. And what about um, all of the music? Yeah. What, what, what kind of outlet is that for you? And yeah. what, what types of things, uh, do you play all these instruments? What do you do? Well, I, I, I've, I'm learning some extra instruments. I'm primarily these days a key keyboardist um, not a very good one, I might add, uh, but but I but I do feel like it's um, it's fun again to uh, to pursue new uh, activities and uh, kind of force your brain to sort of relearn or, or learn new things. And uh, music is great because it's part uh, create creative and it's part sort of mathematics. I saw on the abstract uh, you were doing some coaching. Yep. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about? Um, when you think about mentoring young people, do you are you more drawn towards athletic coaching or mentoring designers or a little bit of both? I think uh, it's circumstantial, really. You know, I I did this you know volunteer coaching for 25 years at the high school level, uh, and, but you know I find that more and more I'm getting more uh, in, inquiries from young people who, who want to know more about the design world and the design process and how can they. How can they kind of start out and kind of then work their way into a, a full-blown career? So I think that circumstantially, um, I'm, yeah, I think I'm starting to sort of lean more toward and, and be more active in mentoring um, people who really want to develop a career in design uh, and especially around sneakers. It's amazing how many young people want to want to do that. Nice. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I feel like it's been. Uh, a fun ride for me and uh, I it maybe it comes across in sometimes the um, articles and or something like you know like uh, like an abstract piece uh, how uh, how fulfilling and fun it is to be a to be a designer and work with people like that so I can understand why young people want to want to do it for sure when you're doing the coaching or the mentoring um how is that for you? I mean, you're a competitive person, you know, you're an athlete. Is it, is it fulfilling? Is it inspiring? Is it frustrating at times? One of the most important things you can do is to pass along what you know, you know, pay it forward if, so if, you, if you will. And so I'm really focused on that and it's almost like, uh, it's almost like it doesn't matter what, wh which arena I'm in. Um, I think it just is part of what we should all be doing when, uh, you know, you've, you've maybe turned back the volume a little bit on your own career, it gives you a little bit more time to, to, um, to maybe look at 
helping others. And it's just uh, it's very rewarding, quite frankly. And I don't, I can't think of any coaching and or mentoring experience that ca has caused me any stress or uh, has been difficult um, in, in any way. It's almost always fun and rewarding. Nice. You've got the right demeanor for it. Seems like it, yeah. And I, I'm, and I, it's, uh, I always say that if uh, whatever you're doing, if you're not if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Do you find at this point in your career looking for new motivations and new things, or is it still just as interesting to you? Or what kind of keeps you going and gets you looking forward to kind of like what's coming up next? Well, I, my, by definition, my job is really about being a, a futurist, and uh, and so. I think that's what uh, Nike and the Jordan brand really wants out of me is to is to lead lead the way um, through some uh, inventive thinking, innovation uh, types of design, and uh, and also all all with uh, with the uh, the overlay of helping athletes perform. And uh, a lot of people want to ask me questions about you know something that I might have worked on 20 years ago, uh, because you know some of those are important products. Um, but uh, but uh, my <laughs> most of the time I'm like, whoa, I have to like think about that for a minute because I'm like you know right. always working in the future. Being asked to to think you know that far into the future, 28 years in the future. Well, that was a gift of sorts because uh, it really, it really actually wasn't a norm, normal thing for me to think that far in the future. Right. So it was great because uh, the people who were writing the movie, Bob Zemeckis and Bob Gale, they're trying to think through all phases of that movie, you know, this futuristic part and uh, making, trying to make some good guesses. And they actually, uh, they did pretty well. Um, holograms and things like that sort of, have come true and um, and uh, and uh, now you could you could say that you know my contribution to that movie uh, being power lacing shoes you know shoes that lace themselves and or have some uh, artificial intelligence um, well that's come true we actually are selling those shoes and we it's a big it's a big initiative for us in going you know going forward so being asked to do that movie uh, has, is, was a gift that keeps on giving because we, we learned a lot from that. And, uh, and once technology sort of improved, I guess you could say, uh, we, um, we took full advantage and uh, now we're here we are, you know, with the shoes that do kind of like, do pretty much what that movie shoe does. I feel like there's that project that you know, kind of developed and started in the 80s, but then had such an impact for 30 years, you know, especially as sneaker culture developed. And then obviously your work on the, on the Jordan line, same thing, where it was now all of these people that are older are so nostalgic for you know, the Air Jordan 3 and the 11s and the 13s. I mean, at any time in the 80s or 90s, could you have imagined that the sort of sneaker culture would develop into what it is and and you know that we'd still be talking about about the back to the future too and 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 all these jordans i have to say that i had no inkling that that that, that it would get this big and um, be this important to people all over the world basically and it's not just uh collectors um i think people uh, are they mark time and uh they read remember uh, good memories through products and, and sneakers have been uh, have just become a huge part of, uh, of people remem remembering a, uh, an, a part of their life from maybe years ago and we hear these really touching stories from famous athletes who are multi-millionaires now but when they were younger they their parents couldn't afford to get them the shoes that they wanted especially Air Jordans or something and and uh, you can just hear the you can just in their in their voice you can hear the emotion of how, of, of going without you know and that and uh, and, and we hear uh, and then when, in talking to them all these years later when they actually have the kind of the resources to to buy whatever they want you know um, uh, first first thing they do is go out and get the get the shoe that they never got to have or or maybe they had it at one time and somehow they they, they lost it or it was worn out or something and uh, it's it's very it's very uh, interesting to um, look um, look into uh, a person's psyche and their soul and see the emotion tied around in sneaker design it's just amazing right yeah for sure is there a moment where 
you kind of saw the shift where it was more about you know re-releasing the sneakers and it wasn't just about designing next year's model but all of a sudden the culture shifted and like you said it became such a nostalgic thing and such a do you sort of remember as time or is it all just kind of a blur as it as it's well it, it seems as though that uh you know there was a you know i guess a a golden era of new sneaker design and uh, probably went up through, you know, the mid to late 90s, I, sus I think. I think there was a kind of a blip in the sort of the design world of sneakers, which happens in cars and, and other, other uh, industries where um, people sort of yearn for something and uh, maybe there is, maybe it's, it's circumstantial, yeah, uh, you know, so it's like maybe once there were so many designs out there, it like starting really, I think in the late 90s and into the, the early 2000s, there's so many shoe companies and so many designs and so many people knocking each other off. And uh, it's kind of like, oh man, that's such a big mess. I can't make sense out of it. I'm gonna go back and sort of focus on on um, you know Air Maxes or Air Jordans or or Chuck Taylors or whatever it is you know whatever whatever um, shoe you know kind of that sort of is important uh, to the person to the individual they, they kind of they just sort of camp out there and then get every color and every <laughs> model you know in that genre you know so I think that did kind of happen and uh, for all of us in this industry you know it's it's actually uh, uh, a little more difficult to get people to um, kind of think think a little bit more about these futuristic designs. And I'm, I'm really, really excited about the, this, um, or what I call the Earl shoe, uh, the, you know, the, or uh, sometimes referred to as the Hyperadapt 1.0. It really uh, is, a, is a kind of a, uh, a big shift in how you think about designing sneakers that ha probably hasn't occurred for a while. So that, I'm hoping that actually helps people sort of see beyond just the kind of the retros and, and uh, maybe think more about the future too, which will be fun. Nice, nice, I like that. You know, I know that you started as a pole vaulter um, and I've, I've heard you talk about, you know, um, being a competitive athlete when you were in college and things like that. Um, for how long, when you first started as an architect and a designer, did you find yourself looking back and thinking about, you know, had you not gotten injured? Um, did you find yourself thinking about like the what ifs of, of pursuing more ath athletics? Oh yeah. <laughs> Every time I go to a track meet, I, uh, uh, it's almost like painful because I'm like, ah, oh, dang, I, sh I should have been in the Olympics. I should have blah, 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 you know, been a pro for years. And, uh, and I think that's what everybody thought was going to happen. And then when I got hurt, it would sort of, you know, it's a, it's a common problem for people um, that have potential, but then for a variety of reasons, they, things just don't go together. You just don't, don't happen. Uh, so, but, <laughs> but for you, would it, I think from the outside looking in, you would think maybe the competitive juices and some of those things, you've been able to stay close to sports and you've been able to have, you know, a lot of, of success through the athletes that you yeah. work so closely with. So does that, temper it or but you still get the feelings like you 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 want to compete uh, I don't uh, I think you're right there's there is a um, there is a silver lining to an injury like that because it, it does I think if you're uh, if you can st still want to in a sense compete and uh, you have to find a new way to do it and for me I was I was fortunate that I had this ability to draw and, and could you know start thinking about problem solving um, and so, so that's been great. I have to say that it, I've been, and some, some people have even postulated that you were so lucky that you got hurt, you know, and so that, cause that, you know, you, you had to knuckle down and become a, something else. And, uh, and I think there's some truth to that, but it just never quite goes away that, you know, dang, I, you know, from, from my whole um, youth, I, I was counting on being a, like a, you know, big time, you know, big time athlete and so and it it I don't think it ever quite goes away talking about kind of that same theme of so many things coming together at the same time can you talk a little bit about the advertising and the marketing that was such a component to a lot of your work oh. and how involved were you during that process of the late 90s of, of were you you know giving a lot of input on how you thought the commercial should be and the ad should be 
Well, the first first rule of advertising that I that I seem to have found out was that uh, you don't listen to anybody else. You just it's just it's if you're in advertising, you come up with your own ideas. <laughs> so, having said that, uh, uh, you know I've had some ideas about about uh, you know storytelling, which is what advertising is. And so uh, my my normal process uh, was was always to go down to the ad agency and just. Uh, explain the process and uh, talk about the inspiration, the performance side of the equation, tell a few stories, and uh, and then go back to my job. And, and so that that was helpful, I think, to um, the, the creative people uh, on that communication side. Um, I don't think it really flavored too much the kind of the, the maybe the idea of a, com a particular commercial. Uh, but it just is always helpful to know um, how the product ended up the way it ended up. You know, so, uh, so I always felt like that was really, uh, really a good, a good thing to do was to, was to go down and work with, um, work with the creatives. Uh, in, in, in our case, it was almost always Wyden and Kennedy uh, here in Portland and I got to know those people extremely well, and they were so good. Anyway, that uh, I just would go down and show them all this, you know, show them the project, and here's how it, here's how it all went down, and uh, and then uh, then walk walk away, and not you know not try and look over anybody's shoulder, or even make suggestions about you know content in an ad because they already they were really good and still are. Nice. You know, you you don't uh, show any signs of slowing down. <laughs> um, do you think that you'll be, I mean, obviously you, you know, you can kind of write your own ticket at this point. Do you think that you will be still doing some type of design, um, you know, another 20 years from now? That's a great, uh, that's a great question because, you know, you know, pe people wear out or, or maybe they run into, um, writer's block or design, you know, creative, you know, sort of, you know, blockades, um, and uh, I, I think about this all the time. I'm actually um, almost in, a, in a, uh, a period of time where I'm actually more creative than ever before. And I, and I don't know how to, how to make sense of that because really by, uh, by general uh, kind of pra practice, through general practice, I should be about retirement age. And, and yet I'm like, I think I have more ideas than ever. And I, and I, I believe that this is this is, you know, it's something that I that I thought up uh, and I pass along, uh, and which is uh, when I sit down to draw or design, um, it's really whatever it is is a culmination of everything that I've seen and done in my life up to that point. So it might be that age is not the issue; it's it's the, it's continuing to have new experiences, and so. Hence, um, the motorcycles, and the surfing, and the music, and the travel, and and uh, and you know trying to be, still be athletic and and ch be, be challenged. You know, I think those things, uh, you know, not really essentially acting my age, um, are that that's the secret. That is the secret. It, it's not a number. It's like, well, what are you doing? And you know where. Where do, where do ideas come from? Well, they come from your experiences and what you observe or what, what you experience and your own insight and then maybe, you know, paying attention to also the insight of others. So uh, I seem to, to be cranking along, you know, um, and just fine. So I don't know that, uh, that I want to stop. Well, I don't know why I would at this point. And so uh, here I am, <laughs> just still, uh, I think I have more projects uh, in the works right now than I've ever had in my entire life, and uh, you know this is one reason why you can you can do so much more work through the you know through these digital tools, um, and then get that information to people a lot quicker. And so I actually am doing more work than maybe ever before on the creative on the creative end. Nice, yeah. perfect. I like that. I like that. That's what I was, th you know, that's, that's what it made me think of is the motorcycling, the music, those types of things. Maybe that, maybe that is, that's the key. Uh, I, su I suspect if I just wanted to golf every day, um, I probably would run out of ideas. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs>